Hey, good evening. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous. I'm glad you joined me tonight. I step into your life every Friday night, uh, miss a couple once in a while, but wanting to be here just to give you hope, to give you direction as you go through the trauma of divorce. You know, if you've never been through a divorce, you don't get how really difficult this is. This is a trauma. It's a trauma of the heart, of your emotions, of your spirit, and it breaks you physically in, in, every, in every sense of the word. So my goal really is to help you minimize the damage because damage is going to occur. But how do we minimize that damage? And tonight's topic is really important, especially in light of a conversation I just had an email uh, with someone recently whose church was not supporting her as she goes through this divorce, breaks my heart because the church is the sanctuary for your soul, where you should be able to go with every struggle that you are dealing with. And it's my goal as I work in the church that I am the church, that this is the church in action, taking those who are broken and providing for them hope and structure and direction and that's really my goal, is to help you get through this process. Now, for those people who've never been through it, they don't get it, and they never will, quite frankly. I went through my own 28 years ago. It's obviously impacted me greatly because the last 20 years, I have been working in the divorce world. I hold support groups. I'm a mediator. I'm a divorce coach. I want to help you minimize the damage. And tonight's topic is one way in which you can minimize the damage. And it is, how do I take care of myself going through divorce? Now, first, let me state that September 10th, just next week, actually, is going to start my next support group. And this is in person and it's also hybrid. And you are welcome to join us. Connect with me. I will send you a registration form. We'll get started. It's 10 weeks. It's 10 weeks of helping you process the trauma that you're going through. And it's also 10 weeks of helping you heal. So important that we are focusing on that. And it takes action. Do not think you can sit back and, and it's all going to happen magically for you. It doesn't. It takes intention. It takes work, quite frankly. And that's why when people come into my group, even though they receive three books, a workbook and two of my other books, um, which I should put up, but I don't have them handy right now. Um, maybe I will toward the end. But it's not required homework. It's not hard stuff because I realize that you're in trauma right now. And one of my books is, oh, let me just throw this one up here because it's one that I've gotten a lot of really good feedback on. And it is 30 Days of Healing After Divorce. That's one of the books that we are, uh, that you're going to receive. Also, um, this book you're going to receive, which is the workbook that we work from. And then also you're going to receive, where's my other one at? It's in here somewhere. Yeah, oh, here it is. This book you're going to receive. So all those three books you're going to receive. And the whole purpose of that is to give you tools to help you in healing. Now, the workbook is has a lot of white space, not a lot of requirement, because again, I know that you're in trauma right now. You don't need a lot of homework to do. You don't need a lot of text to be reading. It's very light reading, but the importance is the discussion. That we have. So we spend an hour, an hour and a half together. And the most important part of it is the discussion that we have. You need to process and articulate what you are going through. And the beauty of group is you're going to hear someone articulate the pain that you're going through that you could not find the words for. That's really so very helpful. And I talked about that last week, so I don't want to get into that too much this week. Other than, other than to say, don't go through it alone, get a support group, get a therapist. So title tonight, how do I take care of myself going through divorce? Number one, you have got to have compassion on yourself. 
you have got to, instead of being critical, because chances are you're hearing some criticism from the other side, you have got to be compassionate on yourself, not beat yourself up, not expect yourself to be at full capacity and functioning 100%. This is a time to have compassion on yourself, to give yourself to br the break, to lighten the load. And I know you may be saying, but I've got kids and demands and everything on me. I get that. I was there. I get that. But there has to be a time where you can intentionally care for yourself. And that may be just those mental breaks, those small mental breaks where you can um, give yourself a break, um, not have 100% house clean, not have 100% everything being done, but simply give yourself a little slack right now. You'll be back to that 100% of capacity and working, but right now you have got to have compassion on yourself because if you don't, you're going to break. Quite frankly, you are. So this is a time to have compassion on yourself, not to criticize yourself. You need to be your own best friend right now. You need to be able to talk yourself through the experience that you're going through. I remember my early days going through the divorce. I had to talk myself through every hour. Can you get out of bed? Can you put one foot in front of the other? Can you go and take your shower? Is now time to get the kids' lunches prepared. You know, those elementary steps that I was taking were so critically important because I was surviving under an incredible traumatic time. And I had to learn compassion on myself, not to be critical, not to have high expectations, not to climb mountains, but to manage the speed bumps. Have compassion on yourself. Love yourself through this. Because I know you don't feel very good about yourself right now. So instead of being critical and depressed, how about you start being curious about what's going on with you and compassionate with yourself? Number two, this comes as no surprise, get the support. Join a group, get a therapist, find good friends, those who will contribute into your life. But I know your friends can only take so much of what you're going through. That's why a support group is so important. We get it. We get why you need to talk this out for the third, fourth, fifth time. We understand the injustice of what you're going through. And also not only a group support, but a therapist, someone who's going to individually work with you and help you through this trauma. Get the support. And that also means not only the group support, the therapy support, get your support in finances, get your support in legal matters, get your support in all of those areas where you may not be really knowledgeable. Get support. Now is the time, even if you've never had support before. And I will tell you, I've had people in my groups who you would think, well, they don't need support. They don't need help. I've had CEOs. I've had attorneys. I've had... Um, I've had doctors, I've had therapists, I've had all these different powerful positions. And yet they were smart enough to realize, I can't do this on my own. I've never been in this area before. I need support. And they were brave enough to step in to my group. Get the support you need. Number three is don't look too far down the road. I say this in every group because it will simply paralyze you. You have all these things, this long list of things to worry about, to take care of. I get it. But you have got to pull back your vision. And you've got to say, what do I need to do today? What is important that I do today? I've got to kick, cook food for the kids. I've got to tend to the kids' needs. I've got to pay this bill because it's due today. Again, to narrow that vision and not look too far down the road. 
It will, let me say it again, it will do nothing but paralyze you. And then you cannot function. Slow it down. What do I need to do today? What do I need to do tomorrow? That's all. We only get to live one day at a time. So let's start living one day at a time. This is going to help you. And it's going to help you take care of yourself as you go through this process. Uh, point number four, be a student of your own soul and heart. What do I mean by that? I mean, be curious about what's going on with you. The more you can articulate the pain, the anger, the feelings of betrayal, the more you can articulate them, the faster, the sooner you can heal from them. I'm not just saying this. This is what research shows. This is what therapy shows. This is what psychology shows. To be curious, to articulate, to identify what's going on with me. Yes, I'm depressed. Yes, I'm hurting. Why? What are those things? Can I list them? Can I write them out? Can I explore? Why am I angry? Why? What am I angry about? And you may say, well, that's pretty obvious. Yes, it is. But you being a student of your own soul and heart, need to be able to write these down. Because if you start writing down what you're angry about, you're going to discover things such as underneath that anger is a whole lot of pain that you've not been able to express. So be a student of yourself. And of course, I'm going to ask you to invite the Holy Spirit of God into this time of your life. Because this is a spiritual matter. You may think, well, divorce is a legal, a financial. No, it is an emotional, it is a spiritual, it is financial, it's a legal, it's a physical. All of those areas it is. So now is the time to be a student of what you're going through, why you're feeling the way that you're feeling. Oh, Oh, there they are. I was going to say, I had some verses on here. Um, of course, I'm going to share with you verses. I'm going to share a two from Psalms. And what I love about this is, is I always say Psalms understands. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Psalms understands because you will find the words that express where you are. So it's a good place to be reading and studying right now. And they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He re rescued them from the grave. And I know many of you feel right now like you are in the grave. Like life is over. I'm done. This is done. You're not over, friend. I've been doing this for nearly 20 years. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of individuals going through divorce. Their life was not over, even though they felt it at times like you may. But life is not over. This is a time to cry to the Lord in your trouble. He will save you from your distress in many practical ways, in many heart ways, in many spiritual ways, emotional ways. Do not neglect God during this time. And then again, the Psalms understands, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. I don't have any energy, God. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from this. Lord, for my bones are in agony. Oh, can't you just hear the psalmist write exactly what you're feeling? That cry of, God, have mercy on me right now. I am faint. Heal me, for my bones are in agony. Such beautiful words are in the book of Psalms. So I encourage you to dig into the book of Psalms right now. Later, when you need wisdom, you're going to get into the book of Proverbs to find that wisdom in the decisions that you're making. And then, of course, jumping into the New Testament, finding who is Jesus and how does he relate to me right here and right now. And what you're going to find is that he relates to you right here and right now. And he came to lead you, to guide you, to save you, not only from this, but for eternity. 
Don't neglect the spiritual aspect of what you are going through. So I hope that this has been of help to you. Let me just say one more time, how do I take care of myself through divorce? I have compassion on myself. I get support for myself. I don't look too far down the road. I back it up and say, what do I need to take care of today? Maybe tomorrow. I'm going to be a student. What's going on in me? Even though this is such a raw time, it is such a powerful time. Because you're going to learn things about yourself you never would have known. And you're going to grow through this if you allow yourself to be open, to get the support, to do the work through this time. I hope this is of help. Connect with me if I can be of help. Uh, this is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous, of walking with you every step of the way through the trauma and after the trauma of divorce. Have a good evening as I find my slide here. <laughs>